Hello chaps and welcome back. Now today I'm returning to a topic which I know from comments is really popular with you, which is great because it's a big passion of mine and that's quality men's footwear. More importantly, how you can access quality men's footwear even if you don't have the deepest pockets in the world. In fact, I'm gonna show you how you can buy a pair of handmade British shoes at a very, very, almost unbelievably modest price, as long as you're prepared to put a few hang-ups behind you, such as somebody else has worn those shoes before. So I know everybody would love to buy, you know, the top-end handmade shoes, but they come with a price tag, you know, hundreds and hundreds of pounds. You know, if we're talking about the big names, Church, Crockett and Jones, names like that, five, six, seven hundred pounds for a pair of shoes. Now, I don't know about you guys, I'm sure there's some of you out there who can afford that, but for me, you know, that sort of money, I would need to see something like an entire suit, pair of shoes, you know, an overcoat and everything back for that sort of money, because I, I simply don't have access to that level of funding. However, you can get those shoes without breaking the bank. And I've gone ahead and done that by, and I've got them here. So they arrived just the other day. My good friend, the post person, brought these along. And the way to buy your shoes, to get those top quality shoes, is to look on auction sites. Now, my one, the one that I use, is gonna be eBay. You know, it's universally the, probably the most common, popular auction site in the world. And it's a great place to go fishing for quality men's shoes. Take your time though, like all things, when there's an auction involved, don't jump, take your time, do the research, look, ask questions, see what else is available. And in that way, I've bought this pair of shoes, which I'm going to show you in a moment. I'm gonna flip the camera around, we'll get close up, and I'll show you what we've got here. Okay, so here they are. Here are those lovely Sanders and Sanders Braemare Brogue shoes in a lovely grain, full grain leather, as you can see. Now let's just talk about the shoe for a moment and the brand. So Sanders, or Sanders and Sanders, to give them their official title, um, was a, is a heritage company. It was created in 1873 by Mr. William and his brother Thomas Sanders, hence the Sanders and Sanders company name. Uh, and they're from Rushton, up in Northamptonshire, where the company is still in operation today and uh, in ownership, fourth generation of the Sanders family. So it's really traditional heritage company, very much like so many of the British men's footwear companies. Now, one of the things about Sanders, they've very much been a contractor to the British government, and they've often provided boots and shoes to the British military. Uh, in fact, in World War I, uh, they were known to produce something like 6,000 pairs of boots per week in the national effort. So they really stepped up to the mark and did what they could, making shoes in their time. So as I say, they now produce these uh, a whole range of shoes, perhaps not hugely popular because they don't have retail outlets. They tend to be bought by people in the know, but they do export to 30 countries on five continents around the world. And those people who know about Sanders are repeat customers because they do make an exceptional pair of shoes or boots and I think at quite a modest price, because one of the things about not having those retail outlets, of course, is that they don't have to, uh, to maintain shops and premises. So their, their sort of value proposition is that little bit better in the favor of the chap who wants to buy them. Now this pair that you see in front of you is Braemare. That's the model name. And although it's available for anybody to purchase on the Sanders website, it is a pair of shoes which are contracted to the British military, and I've little doubt that that was the originating source of this pair of shoes. Um, and it's, uh, I would, I'm gonna stick my neck out. I have seen them being worn by Scottish regiments in the past, very much in keeping with, you know, the, the, the heritage and the tradition of Scottish regiments, wearing kilts, things like that. Um, and I'm gonna guess that probably at some point in the life of their shoes, which were made in 1986 originally, as I can see from the label inside. I don't know if you can just see that also. Just inside there, 1986. Um, that is at that point that this pair of shoes would have entered the chain. Anyway, so, great pair of shoes. 
Uh, very robust. Now, why did I choose these? Well, I knew if I'm buying something from Sanders, I'm gonna get a pair of shoes at a modest price. I'm not paying Crockett and Jones or church prices for an equal pair of shoes. They're shoes that are gonna be in handmade in the family factories in Northamptonshire. And undoubtedly, these shoes would have been produced in Northamptonshire and have been made on a last in a factory by a British um, tradesperson at some point. And I know they're gonna be very good quality because they would have been produced for the government and they don't accept any old second class stuff. So this pair of shoes, full grain leather, as you can see, I hope you can see anyway, have a good look at that. Good grain leather. It's in good overall condition, the shoe itself. There are no tears, there's no lumps missing out of it. It seems to have been well looked after. It's a little bit dusty. It hasn't seen polish for quite some time. Tiny bit of scuffing on the front here, but nothing which concerns me too much. So the upper, all in good nick. I can see it inside the shoe. I don't know if you can very well, but it's uh, all intact. It's my size, it's a size eight, that's why I bought it. And it is a good overall shoe. Now, the important thing with any pair of leather sole shoes is to look at the leather soles. And in this case, I can see the heel. Now the heel hasn't worn down too badly at all. And it appears to be the original heel. So that gives me an indication that this pair of shoes didn't have too bad a life. Again, leading me to think it may be a military shoe because the guys would have worn these perhaps as their best. So, you know, worn for parades and things like that. So not bad wearing down, looks to be, to me, the original uh, heel. Now the heel itself, as I look at it, I can see that it is made of stacked leather. So some lower quality shoes will have a particle board block or a hollow block placed here, uh, which makes up the height of the heel. In better quality shoes, most often shoes made in you know, the British shoe industry, looking on the inside, I can see that this is layers of leather that have been nailed or stuck together, some form of adhesive, which has been used to create the height needed for this pair of shoes. Now looking underneath, I can see the sole. Now normally, you know, when you look at a sole, it always looks a bit rough because they, you know, these are the things that are in contact with the ground and you have to expect um, expect them to show that wear and tear. So this particular pair looks like any other, you know, it looks like it's had a bit of a hard life. But then when I look at it further, I investigate further. You look at the lines where the stitching is. First of all, I can see that this is a Goodyear welted shoe. That means that the upper as being attached to the sole by way of a, a flap of leather at the bottom, which allows the sole to be sewn to the upper. And very importantly, it means that the sole can be replaced. So should the sole need replacement, it can be taken away and a new sole can be sewn to that welt at the bottom. So quite easy, can be done several times in the lifetime of a pair of shoes. So even if you were to buy a pair of shoes which were tired and had a hard life, it's not that big a job to replace the sole entirely. Now, looking at the sole, I can see, again, that it's quite a thick leather sole in comparison to some of the more dress shoes you will find. Good thick sole, double sole by the look of it. Uh, and then touching, feeling the bottom, I'm pressing in the center that would have been the ball of the foot, uh, the center of the sole. There is absolutely no give in that at all. Sometimes when you press into this area where a pair of shoes is at a hard life and it might be coming near to wear through, you can feel a bit of flex, bit of give, there's that. You can feel that little bit of uh, wear there. You know this is absolutely solid. So I know with quite an element of confidence that this pair of shoes hasn't had a hard life. Similarly, when I look at the stitch line, I can see that the leather has only been worn down to level with the stitching. So the stitching is visible all the way around, even though the toe has had a bit of wear, Obviously, whoever wore these shoes scuffed his toe a bit as they walked, but you know, there is nothing at all wrong with this sole. It's solid. It's gonna give a, a good few years of service yet. And when it does wear out, it can be easily replaced. So there we are. That is a good pair of solid brogue shoes that will do some excellent service. And the reason why I'm sort of very excited about these shoes, 
these shoes, this, let me just check, I get the other one in here. It's a matching pair, the other one is exactly the same. There's no defects, no uh, additional wear or tear. There's no issues with this shoe either. The sole is in exactly the same level of conditioning. The heel is the same wear level. So, you know, they've obviously a matched pair from the beginning of their lives together. There's no issues with those shoes. And let me just check. I actually paid 12 pounds and 58 pence for these shoes. 12 pounds and 58 pence, so sub 13 pounds. Today, if I were to buy these shoes on the Sanders website, they cost £185, which actually is a modest price for what you get. You get an excellent shoe for that price, but for £12.58, it's a remarkable value deal because I know, and I'm going to make a video immediately after this one, showing how I've renovated these, brought them back up to life, given them some colour, tidied them up. Um, please have a look at that video after you've watched this one. Uh, and you know, there is an excellent pair of shoes that can easily be worn to work, can be worn casually because of the grained leather, it's slightly less formal. But again, in this modern era, people wear pretty much anything they want, anytime they want. There's no adherence to social protocols anymore. But this pair of shoes will do for wearing with a suit, for wearing with uh, dark colored slacks perhaps, or whatever you want to do. You know, this is a really good pair of shoes that will last somebody years and years before it needs any significant maintenance whatsoever. And I have paid 12 pounds and 58 pence for those shoes. So it is a remarkable deal. And this is what can be picked up as long as you're prepared to put behind you these concerns perhaps of wearing a pair of shoes that have been worn by somebody else. Um, you know, once you've worn them once or twice, they're your shoes. There's no doubt about it. They conform to the shape of your foot. They are just as good as if you bought them directly yourself and you have saved quite literally a fortune. So let's just move them to one side. I want to show you another example of how you can make some really good savings buying shoes that have been owned by somebody else before. So let's have a look. Right, let me show you this pair of shoes. Now, this is one of the pair of shoes that I wear with quite a lot of regularity. I'm very fond of these because I'm a big fan of burgundy or oxblood colored shoes because they're highly flexible. You can wear them with all different types of clothing, casual, formal, business formal, and they go easily with greys and navy colors as well. Now this is a pair, as you can see, um, it's quite an interesting pair of shoes in itself. It's got several things going on. I'll just pick it up to show you. It's got grained leather effect here in the apron part of the shoe. And then the main parts, so the, the cap toe and the hind quarters of the shoe on this Oxford style lacing arrangement are all smooth leather. Um, so an interesting contrast on the eye when you look at them. Um, although it looks like they've been brought up to a mirror shine, I haven't brought them up to a mirror shine. That is quite simply the leather that's been used. It's not patent leather, but it's a high polish leather. Uh, and these shoes are by the manufacturer Grenson. Now, I'm a big fan of Grenson. They are less well known than Church and Crockett and Jones and all of these other uh, rather trippy names, which are very popular these days. But these are one of the you know longer lasting heritage manufacturers. Grenson were founded by a chap called William Green in 1866, six, again in Rushton in Northamptonshire. So many of the best shoes in the world uh, are actually originating from Northamptonshire. It's almost amazing. Uh, and, you know, they've been manufacturing these shoes ever since that time. They were the first manufacturer to employ the Goodyear welting style to attach the soles to the uppers that we just talked about in the, the, the Sanders shoes. So they've really uh, been there from the beginning on that front. And again, stepped up to the mark for the country. World War I and World War II, uh, they produced footwear, boots and shoes for the military at its time of need. So, you know, very much uh, a good quality heritage shoe with a lot of history. Um, they were owned by the family until 2010 when uh, they um, sold it on and now it's still in manufacturers, many, many shoes. I would say these days are a little more fashion forward. They're quite fashionable, some of the shoes that, that are available. They've opened up a number of um, gentlemen's stores selling shoes, which, you know, something that Sanders don't have, but you will find Grenson shops in Jermaine Street and, uh, and a number of other locations, perhaps around the world, if not around the United Kingdom. So this is a good pair of hand manufactured shoes, again in England. And uh, I think if we just look underneath, you can see Again, excellent quality uh, sole. 
I've worn these quite a lot, but you can very clearly see the stitch marks. So there's no, if these shoes were like new when I bought these, and these actually cost me 41 pounds off eBay. Now we were to buy these I mean, I think they're obsolete. They're no longer available on the Grenson website. But uh, if I were to buy these in their heyday, you know, I'd have been talking several, two, three, four, five times the amount of money that it cost me to buy these when I purchased them. And they were like new, believe me. I mean, you can see the sort. I've been wearing these for probably three years now. But when I got them, Goodyear welted sole, you know, stacked leather uh, heel again. It's all good quality stuff very modestly priced just over 40 pounds and i've got a pair of shoes there potentially for years and years i often wear these with a navy suit because the lovely contrast between the color uh, and that contrast between the materials used in the manufacture of these shoes makes them you know easy on the eye a bit of broguing it's a semi brogue obviously broguing on the medallion of the toe cap and around the edging just makes it more interesting to look at than perhaps just a cap to Oxford. So I really love these shoes and I favor them when I wear them quite a lot. Um, just pop them to one side. And finally, I'd like to show you one more pair of shoes, which I picked up off eBay uh, some time ago. And again, this is a pair of Grensons. So like I say, when you find a manufacturer that suits you, you like their style, particularly if you're lucky to find one that you like, which isn't one of the big names. So if you were searching for Church, Crockett and Jones, you know, any of these other big names, you wouldn't be able to find these, these good prices, Carmina, names like that. Because people are aware of them and they regularly search for them on eBay. Now, Grenson, you know, although they're still very popular and they still manufacture great shoes, perhaps they're less so than they used to be in the public awareness. Now, this is a lovely pair of Grenson shoes highly interesting as you can see it's uh, it's got a brogue uh, effect going on here a wingtip effect in the oxford style lacing but with as you can see a very interesting leather weave effect around the apron area of the shoe which gives it a very interesting uh, profile it's a very interesting shoe again it's made of this high sort of gloss leather uh, manufactured again in Northamptonshire a bit of piping and if you can quite see it but there's piping around the the edging where your foot would go in and just underneath again a fantastic quality show uh, sole when I took delivery of this it was oh god two or three years ago again uh, I paid 26 pounds and 52 pence for this pair of handmade British manufactured shoes from a known and trusted heritage manufacturer and i have to say when i got them they were as new it may well have been that whoever bought these didn't get on with the look or whatever because it is unusual and it's an unusual color to many people you know so many people choose to go down the route of black or simply just brown but i think when it comes to something like this you know, you get a lot of money, a lot of bang for your buck, and uh, you've just got to be prepared to strike when you see them. Now, um, what I would say about this bit, yes, you know, the, it, the there's a lot going on, so it makes them a bit more casual. You know, you wouldn't perhaps wear these to the most formal events in the world, but I certainly wear them with a navy suit. I certainly wear them in the summertime with a pair of chinos, either blue or khaki colored chinos. They really add a bit of zing to any outfit. And for the price, you know, what could I have bought for 26 pounds? Probably if I went to the cheapest of all budget shoe shops, I'd have bought something where there was a, a composite rubber sole cemented to some sort of composite plastic leather upper which would have lasted no time at all would have looked awful and wouldn't have been any good for my feet would have caused them to perspire and all sorts of things so you know for that same amount of money for an almost new pair of shoes i was able to buy handmade british manufactured shoe uh, that i know will last me you know potentially decades because of the goodyear leather welted sole the sole can be replaced when it needs to be. Although to be fair, this pair of shoes had an almost new sole when I got it, and I will expect them to last me many years. Well, I hope you found that interesting. I mean, for the price, it is almost unbelievable. The quality that you can get, you can't replicate that in any retail experience, I think, in the world. Uh, to be able to buy a pair of artisan quality, handmade, 
all leather shoes made in the country where I am in Britain, you know, a few hundred miles away, where it's been made for hundreds of years in that factory by people who are experts and for what, under 13 pounds. You know, it's simply, you can't access that quality in any other way. As long as you're prepared to wear a pair of shoes that somebody else has worn before. For me, it's not an issue. It's something you've got to address with yourself because you can be wearing great shoes all the time as long as you're prepared to do that. Now, thanks for listening today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. There's another video coming shortly after showing me renovating those um, Sanders Bremer shoes you saw there. Please pop along to that one and we'll see what the end product you can get for under 13 pounds will be with a bit of love and attention as well. So don't forget, if you've enjoyed this one, hit that like button and when you're there, click the subscribe button as well. That way you won't miss any of the future material that I create for you and us as chaps. And please leave some comments for me in the comments section below. I really do love to hear from you and get your feedback, good or bad. So, until the next time at the Chaps Guide, please take care and look after yourselves. 